Oh, you're all important now, all grown up. Don't give me that bullshit Mr. Experience crap. I mean, what the fuck do you know? You can't even vote. You can't even drink at a bar unless I sneak you in and buy you one and then steer you back to the car. Yeah, and I'm not 23 living off of mom and dad. You can't tell me what to do anymore. I have my own goddamn opinions. I'm my own fucking man. Get with the fucking program. She stares at him, then starts laughing. <laughs> <laughs> what? What the fuck's so funny? Sorry. What? Damn, I, I'm so sorry. I'm so, I'm so sorry, little brother. I just... It's so funny somehow when you swear. Especially fuck. It, it's cute. It's cute somehow. I am sorry. I'm sorry. I know that's not what you want to hear, but like I keep seeing this like, cute little smiley boy, and I mean, like I, like I don't, I don't care if you swear. It's just cute. Okay, I'm sorry. Take your map. There, be in charge of your destiny. Yeah, that's fine. Be the boss. Fuck you. <laughs> come on, come on. Just take us somewhere, wrong or right. Fine. You be in charge, little brother. But get us out of here. Guns the engine mad, studies the map that roars down the empty room. The car sputters and dies. What the fuck? He turns the engine over, but it coughs and dies again. Damn it! He jumps out and pops open the hood. Smoke pours out of the engine. Oh shit, oh shit, this isn't good. No, this isn't good. Crap. Smoke drifts down the empty road. Morning. The center on Spurs Road, Reno Foothills, they're clearing out their crippled vehicle and stuffing their backpacks. Rainier adds the key, the car keys to the red bag, and Rebecca crams the bag in her pack. The last thing they pull out of the car is Rachel's duffel bag. Shit. That ain't gonna fit in our packs. Nope. Sure isn't. He hoists on his pack, then picks up the duffel, and they head off down to the road, down the road on foot. Late morning, Highway 95, south of Reno. They trudge south along the side of the road. The landscape is wide open and mostly treeless. Rainier watches a car roar by. Phoenix is a bloody long way. There's no way we can walk that far. Why? You got somewhere to be? Besides, I don't see a bus coming, so I don't really think we have a choice. Yeah, we do. We have to hitchhike. Hitchhike? No, no, I'm not hitchhiking. I've never hitchhiked. You've never done a lot of things. Oh, and you're an old pro, I take it. Don't give me that shit. Mom and Dad never let you hitchhike. Well, they aren't here to stop us. He sticks out his thumb as the car passes. No, no, no. She slaps his hand, but the car doesn't slow. We're not hitchhiking. It's dangerous. So is dying of starvation walking 400 miles south on the 95. Damn. If you're thinking about going home, forget it. Don't insult me. Okay. What makes hitchhiking dangerous? Well, I suppose being at the mercy of some case in a car, guys taking you hostage and robbing you, even rape or, or even murder. Yes, exactly. Guys. So this is what we do. We only ride with women. What? How many chicks are really gonna pick up hitchhikers? Probably not many, if they're smart. Especially because I'm a guy. True, but like, you, you can try to look gay. <laughs> that might make them feel safer. How am I supposed to do that? Seriously, we only ride with women. Maybe with the one exception of, like, if they have kids with them. I'm thinking even serial killers don't kill people when they have their own kids with them. What if they have their dog with them? No, no, they'll kill in front of their dog. When did you become such a damn expert on serial killers? I'm hoping not to be. Come on. Midday Highway 95, south of Reno. Rainier looks back down the hot, dreary road as they march south. No cars. They stop to study a roadside cross with a pair of Harley wings inscribed, Ride with God. They hear a car approaching. There's one. Is it a guy? Hard to tell. You don't think so? He sticks out his thumb. The car pulls over. The, guy's, the driver is a guy in his mid-twenties with long, wavy hair. Hey, need a lift? Uh, thanks, but never mind. She'll only ride with girls. Wow. What if I say I'm gay? I tried that. <laughs> okay. Well, good luck. When my sister head this way, I'll tell her to stop on by. He cranks the stereo back up and pulls away. Damn it, Beck, we could be sitting on our asses right now rocking out to Nepal death. Or bound and gagged with duct tape and waiting to die. Oh, for Christ's sake, he had a sister. Isn't that good enough? A guy with a sister probably wouldn't kill women. Like hell, what I, what if the sister beat him up and took away his toys when he was a little kid and now he hates women, huh? What if she tortured him? You mean worse than you? Shut up. <laughs> Afternoon Highway 95. They trudge southward, dripping sweat and exhaustion. A battered minivan approaches. 
Various heads can be discerned, and Rainier sticks out his thumb. The minivan pulls over. It's filled with kids, two in car seats, and a tired-looking woman at the wheel. A big mutt of a dog bounces up. What about a woman, kids, and a dog? That'll work. I can give you guys uh, a ride, but you'll have to chip in on gas. I barely have enough to make it to the next town. Okay. Uh, how far are you going? Hopefully to my mom's place near Coldale. Where's that? A couple of hours down, down the road. Will 20 bucks get us there? Yeah, get it. Evening. The Gold Rush Pagoda Restaurant in Goldfield, Nevada. They sit at a red vinyl booth amid the cheesy pseudo-Asian decor of a very low-budget Chinese restaurant. The remains of their greasy dinner rest heavily on their Melmac plates. Rainier picks up the grimy bottle of ketchup, studies it, then opens a fortune cookie. Never trust a Chinese restaurant with ketchup on the table. You could have shared that sage bit of Confucian wisdom before we ordered. Night at the Motherload Saloon in Goldfield, Nevada. They stand outside. Oh, come on, Beck. Two dollar beers. Even we can afford them. Actually, not having a shower in days has made you look a little older. It almost looks like stubble. Well, don't rub it off. It took me weeks to grow that. Interior Motherload Saloon. They sit at a very down-home bar with a couple of beers along with a few locals. A guy in overalls plunks some quarters into the jukebox and selects Punch, Fight, Fuck by Hank Williams Jr. A local fellow next to them starts bobbing his head to the music. God damn, that's great music. <laughs> Good stuff, all right. You're damn right. A guy in a white tank top stretch over a big gut holding a shot glass ambles by and stops. You got a sweet little girly there, partner. Now you know how to keep her happy or do you need some help? That's my sister. She doesn't need any help. Ah, your sister. Fuck me blind. How sweet is that? Well, hi, sweetie. I'm sorry the only day you could find on Friday night was your brother, but good fortune has smiled upon you. <laughs> Can I buy you a shot or something? No thanks, I'm fine, but oh, thank you. Baby, you don't need to be that shitty with me. I'm a man. Bartender. This sweet old thing. Get her a drink. It's on me. No thanks, I'm good. Guy plops down on the stool quite too close to her. Buy you a drink. You want a Jaeger or something? And I'm gonna cut your little brother loose tonight and show him what a real man can look for you. You sweet holiday thing. You wanna dance now, baby? Without a word, Rainier stands up and decks him, knocking him to the floor. Rebecca jumps up and screams, and then the guy, who happens to be much bigger than Rainier, staggers up and prepares to lay him out. Rebecca whips out her pepper spray and douses the guy. He retreats, gasping and choking, and everyone in the vicinity scatters, coughing and rubbing their eyes. Rebecca chokes too, but clambers for their gear, grabs Rainier and thrusts his pack at him, and hauls him towards the door. They charge out of the bar, choking. Thanks for the chivalry, little brother. Now let's get the hell out of here. They dash for a side street and flee through the dark, deserted town. They finally stop in the shadows on a green lawn and throw down their gear, panting and looking back. I think we're okay. Where are we? I don't know. She peers up at an illuminated white cross above. A church, I'd say? Hopefully we'll be safe on holy ground. She hauls out her sleeping bag and unfurls it, then flops down on top. Rainier looks around cautiously, then follows suit. She starts giggling. Then he starts giggling. You're feeling pretty badass, aren't you? <laughs> I am woman, hear me roar! <laughs> What's that Roosevelt said? Walk softly and carry a big pepper spray. <laughs> Man, if, I, if I'm ever in a bind, I know who to call. You call your big sister, bro. I got your back. He holds up his hand and she gives him a high five as they roll on the ground with laughter. <laughs> Night on the church lawn. They sleep serenely on the green grounds, a chorus of crickets chirping. Dawn on the church lawn. They're sleeping peacefully. A ch 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 ch, -ch sound stirs the silence as the sprinklers, the sprinklers come on with the dawn and begin to spray across the lawn and the two slumberers. They come, to, uh, they come to with a jolt and scramble for their bags and packs. Water showers down upon them and they grab their gear as they make a break for it. Exterior morning, Highway 95 in western Nevada. They walk south, hitchhiking. Broken glass glitters across the arid expanse. It's getting hot already. I miss my car. Me too. They hitchhike onward towards, through several pages and chase down some Hell's Angels. They land at the Desert Fox Strip Joint in Phoenix. Afternoon at the Desert Fox in Phoenix. In the glaring sun, they study the seedy-looking place with some trepidation. Wow. I've never been in one of these places. Me neither. I wanted to. Now I'm not feeling so enthusiastic. I'm glad you're with me. I'm a bit scared. I need IDs. Huh? 
no ID, no entry, no fucking around. They fumble for their IDs and hand them to the bouncer. Okay, Missy, you're good. And you ain't getting in for another six months, boy. Oh, give me a break. Which one would you like? They turn away in disgust. This does sound. Yeah, I mean, what the fuck? I've already been drinking across three states. What the hell's the difference with a few boobs? A few big boobs. A few fake boobs. Guys don't even like fake boobs. Really? Good to know. This is fucking ridiculous. I mean, maybe if we- Rules are rules, little brother. Wait for me out here. No, you can't go in there by yourself. Rachel did. You're not Rachel. I- no, <laughs> I'm not. She didn't have anyone waiting for her outside. You can't go in that place alone. I'm sure she can. Come on in, sweetie. Rebecca recoils, looks back at her brother, then heads into the darkness beyond the grimy building curtain. Afternoon, Chandler parents' bedroom. Lewis walks in to find Elizabeth listlessly dusting around the urn on the dresser with her daughter's ashes. I wonder what the other two are doing now. I'm glad they have each other. Whatever that's worth. Still no more gas charges? Nothing. It makes me fucking insane. I keep checking every day and there's nothing. Oh, God, I can't stand it. I know. All I can figure is that piece of shit Sentra finally crapped out. Or worse, what if they also... I thought about all that. But if they have their IDs on them, if something bad happened, we'll have heard. We'll have gotten a another one of those god-awful phone calls. I think it makes sense that no news is good news. I hope you're right. But I don't know how much longer I can take this. I can't believe how old I look. I've aged so much. You've never looked so beautiful. Then you must be going blind. I have so many new wrinkles and white hairs. That's the great thing about the aging process, my dear. All your wrinkles and gray hairs increase as my vision decreases. <laughs> so when I say that you look just as beautiful as you did 20 years ago, I actually mean it. <laughs> yes, I really do mean it. He kisses her. Afternoon in the, in the desert box. Rebecca stands awkwardly in back of the small dark room, unsure what to do next. A gaunt, weight-like young woman with a bleached pixie hairdo dances listlessly on the stage, ironically to Tracy Chapman's fast car. A handful of men watch stoically. The manager approaches Rebecca. Hey, honey. You need a job? Uh, yeah. Maybe. I'm gonna hang out right now and check it out. You can give it a try. Maybe just dance a little. We got some boys here. Oh, no. No, no thanks. I, I'm just going to watch for a while. Come on, you'll be good. Get up there. Go dance a little. Let me get you a drink. No, no, really. I'm, I'm just watching today. The manager's already headed for the bar, returning post-haste with a reddish cocktail and a tall glass with a cherry for her. Here, honey, you'll like this. Rebecca takes a drink and winces. Good, huh? Go try it out. Have some fun and make some money. Not today. I'm just watching today. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. You can try whenever you want. You'll have fun, you'll see. Drinks are on me. Maybe just one dance. Why don't you talk to some of the girls? Lotus will come around after the set. Afternoon in the desert box, Rainier lingers restlessly outside. The bouncer stands expressionless by the door. How long you worked here? Three weeks. Not long enough to know my sister. I've known a lot of guys' sisters. Lovely. Look, how much would it take for you to just. Seven weeks pay? What? That's how long it took me to find this job. Rainier sighs and sits down in his pack. Inside the desert fox, a, bru a buxom brunette is now on stage. Far more raucous, shaking it and selling it hard to Ted Nugent's cat scratch fever. Rebecca sits at a back table with a wistful lotus, who's now clad in some lingerie. Yeah, she really was my friend. I think I'm the only one left here who knew her. She was a good dancer, actually. I mean, a for-real dancer. 